Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Boeing and Kitty Hawk whisk up a new joint venture. London Biggin Hill Airport will commemorate 80th anniversary of the Battle of Britain. And a Nigerian court orders a seizure of Emirates aircraft. Happy Friday and welcome to the show. I'm your host, Sophie Herlock. Boeing and Kitty Hawk have rebooted their joint eVTOL project, rolling out WISC, a new brand for the Cora program. Headquartered in Mountain View, California, with locations in Atlanta and New Zealand, the company says WISC is a name that embodies the way flying should feel, easy and quick. The aircraft is still called Cora and features a vertical lift system that includes 12 independent rotors. Each direct drive motor combination has only one moving part, the fan, and flight tests have shown an issue with one rotor is automatically handled with no change in the flight path. If a situation arises where Cora needs to land without its fans, Cora is equipped with a parachute for safe landing. Cora has logged more than 1,000 flights and the company is currently demonstrating its proof of concept in New Zealand and working closely with the New Zealand CAA. We'll be right back with Around the Patch. Today is a new dawn. With a new name. Un nuevo logotipo. A new factor. Und einen globalen Kundenfokus. We are Continental Aerospace Technologies and we stand behind you. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. It's time for today's trip around the patch. On Monday, December 9th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, the FAA will be streaming a new webinar to assist pilots in passing an instrument rating check ride. The webinar will emphasize the new ACS language of risk management and will include an educational demonstration of a mock check ride using a local CFI as the applicant. Participants will have the opportunity to review various parts of the ground portion and find ways to improve responses. Back on November 18th through the 22nd, NORAD conducted a Amalgam Dart 20-4 at McGee Tyson Airport. Amalgam Dart 20-4 was designed to test NORAD's ability to deploy its integrated air defense system and execute its aerospace warning and control missions at a non-designated aerospace control alert facility. The training scenario replicated airborne intercepts of aircraft violating temporary flight restricted airspace over the greater Knoxville, Tennessee area. The International Council of Air Shows Convention begins this upcoming Monday, December 9th through the 12th in Las Vegas. In its 52nd year, this year's convention will be packed with over 11 hours of exhibit hall sessions. 45 educational sessions, and air show performances. The Bob Hoover Legacy Foundation will also be traveling to the convention and will be located at display number 441, so please stop by and say hello. The FAA issued a safety alert for operators concerning compliance standards for helicopter crash-resistant fuel systems. The CRFS safety standards reside in Title 14, Parts 27 and 29, and in Title 49 of the United States Code, Section 44737. On November 2nd of 1994, helicopter fuel system crash resistance became a regulatory requirement in Amendment 27-30 of 14 CFR Part 27 and Amendment 29-35 of 14 CFR Part 29. EASA granted an STC to MT Propellers for the installation of its MTV-6 three-blade propeller on Diamond DA-42 airplanes. The installation requires no engine modifications, 
ground roll and takeoff distance of over 50 feet obstacles is reduced by about 131 feet and climb performance is improved by 10 percent pilot should see a two to three knot improvement in cruise speed with the new propeller we'll be right back with the rest of the news There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. London Biggin Hill Airport plans to hold a public event on August 18th of 2020 to commemorate the 80th anniversary of the Battle of Britain, the first campaign of World War II to be fought entirely in the air. David Wynn Stanley, the airport CEO, said we are well underway in our preparation for a spectacular public event, along with other commemorative events that will honor those who served in the Battle of Britain during the 80th anniversary year here at the most famous of all the Royal Air Force fighter stations. Biggin Hill played a significant role in the battle which came to an end on August 18th. On that day, which went down in history as the hardest day, the German left Waffa made an all-out effort to destroy the RAF Fighter Command. The airport is now striving to become London's preeminent full-service business aviation airport and a leading center for aviation technology and enterprise, and plans to develop an aerospace technology college and a four-star hotel next year. A Nigerian court ordered the seizure of an Emirates Boeing 777 to settle a decade-long dispute over a plane ticket. The airline reportedly owes 8.1 million Nigerian Naira, or about $22,400, to Nigerian citizen Ms. Promise Mekwanye over a disputed ticket. Mekwanye purchased a ticket back on December of 2007 from Dallas to Lagos and back. She said the $2,067 ticket was confirmed more than three times. But when she showed up at the gate, she was denied boarding with no other explanation than the ticket was canceled. Emirates offered her no compensation, refund, or other arrangements for her travel. The matter first went to court in 2010, and a trial court awarded McQuan Ye a full refund of the ticket, plus about $7,000 in damages and $700 in legal fees. Emirates won an initial appeal, but McQuan Ye took the case to the Nigerian Supreme Court, which reinstated the damages. Emirates has still not paid up, so a federal high court sitting in Lagos ordered the seizure of the aircraft until the airline makes a proper restitution. And that's it for this week, everyone. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to click subscribe and to check us out on Twitter and on Facebook. To stay up to date on the latest aviation and aerospace news this weekend, head over to aero-news.net. I'll see you Monday.